A great man once said, if you're going to build a time machine, why not do it with some style? Well, I've taken that message to heart, and everything I've done has had to have some style. So here are my speaker stands. Now, they're not speaker stands you can buy. These are speaker stands you can buy. These are the Sanus 31s, 31 inch high. And they're cheap and they hold up speakers. They even hold up the PSAs, the big PSAs. But me, no, different, better, has to be. So these are the blank. I haven't thought of a name for them. The Zisolators are in here. The wires are here. But as for the actual whole thing, suggestions in the comments, please. Now, as a base for both of them, is a pair of Martin Logan Dynamo 300 subwoofers, powered subwoofers. These are the 8 inch. And what they're basically here to do is any speaker I put atop these gargantuan speaker stands, they fill in the low end. If I need them to, I could just turn the volume knob down and then I get full range of the speakers. Now, if I'm going to get super crazy and I haven't gotten there yet, there'll be dramatic lighting. To, to whitewash the front from here. There might even be a passive uh, crossover so that I could cut, you know, 80 and below from the speakers I'm putting on top. I may or may not do that. Let's just look at the actual build and functionality of these. Eight inch subwoofer, eight inch subwoofer, $130 a piece. I've had this one for a while. It's all scratched up. This one I bought brand new because I wanted to try dual subs and you're not going to get a better, cheaper sub, period. So I had them there, left and right of this TV cabinet. And looking at them there, and then I had the little speaker stands next to it, I'm like, oh, what if I combine these two things? So, let's do that with style. Ninety by 90 Masumi Lumen Extrusion. The smaller brackets... These are M8 blued steel hardware, mounting hardware. Brackets on the bottom and the top, all around. Here they're just bolted straight into the wood with the right size hole. Here they're bolted straight into the ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, AKA cutting board, because they won't come out anywhere. There's no lock washers on anything. Everything had to be uh, thread lockered. All these nuts over here, all thread lockered in place. Those isolators I had to review separately, but I'll tell you about them again. They're just to keep vibrations from going down into the stand, which is ironic because now there's an incredible amount of vibrations going up into the stand. And in reality, if I wanted to be super serious about these, there would be less balls. As few balls as possible, as little touching as possible. But I've committed already, so 12 balls per side it is. And they're able to hold any amount of weight. Any amount of weight. I could put 200 pound speakers on each of these because they're ridiculous. I removed the rubber feet from the bottom of the Martin Logan so they could slide around easily on the carpet and other surfaces. I may continue to do something so I could actually adjust the, the tilt. The floors here are pretty level, so I don't have to worry about it too much. And, uh,. Are they worth the over $500 I paid to put these together? That's right. Over $500. 130 a piece. That's 260. The aluminum here, these pieces, these center pieces were $51 each. All these brackets were 350 each. Then add shipping, then add the cost of the hardware from McMaster car. Then let's add two pieces of cutting board that were $10 a piece. Then the balls that were $12, were they 12 or $14 for each? section and then up here which you don't notice there is a quarter inch piece of neoprene that the speaker rests on so instead of blue tack because everyone loves blue tack the quarter inch neoprene works just as well and that's super 77 down to the top and only recently have i added these hypertensioned uh, shock cord they just have some washers here that are dropped in and they just keep these two pieces together without flying off and the balls going everywhere, without being a physical connection. 
So it's still still doing its job. Now, this is a mess down here, and I should fix it. I actually have to redo this. Basically, what goes on here is this. The ports here on the back of the Martin Logan are so big that you can put a piece of stripped wire and a banana plug at the same time, which is what I have. The camera's pointed up slightly. Oh god, don't detach the camera. <sighs> so, the wires just plug right in and the receiver plugs right in here and here. And I have jumpers that go from hot to hot, and ground to ground. So, full range comes in, full range gets jumped over, so the subwoofer is getting full range in both channels. Then out of this side, banana plugs also fit, go up. Feed the speakers, everything's good. If I don't want to hear the subwoofers, I just turn the knobs down. Or I could flip them off if I don't want to adjust the level. And every time I've changed the speakers out on top, I've had to come back and play with these. Whether it's the frequency response or the gain, more efficient speakers, you don't need as much sub. These actually require more power to them with the wave crest than they do with the PSAs, the giant PSAs. So I love these things. They look amazing. I should drag them out to Colorado for the Rocky Mountain Audio Fest. They really complete the room. And how much do they weigh? Lots. Lots is the answer. And you'll also notice they're very tall. They're above belly button tall. And the reason for that is as follows. See what the TV is? See where that projection screen that's now welded to the ceiling because the lifters are too damn strong? Yeah. The ultimate placement, oh Jesus God, of left and right speakers is not ear level. I'm sitting on this couch, that's well above ear level. All right? Those 31 inch can get the tweeters right about right. But I'm not concerned about ear level for movies. When that screen's down, this is the halfway point of the screen, and this is 5 eighths up the screen. And you want your sound, ideally, all three front speakers will be 5 eighths up the screen height. And that's actually doable in this case. My speaker stands are this high, and if I mount a speaker physically to the back of this screen, so I can have, here's my center channel currently. It's my white, my custom painted white Fluence SX6. I could buy a legitimate center channel and mount it right there. So that it comes down with the screen and when it comes down I flip a switch and that gets used as my center channel. And everything would line up perfectly. I should, I should take this video right into height dominance, which is another little factor I've uh, been neglecting, where things that are taller just sound better. They just sound better. They scare you. They make you excited to hear them. Put your speakers on the floor and tell me how excited you are to hear music. Then put your speakers dick height, then put your speakers chest height, and then sit down and have the speakers be slightly above your level. Just slightly. Six inches to a foot from ten feet away. I want to... Got to make sure you're not like here. You notice these are upside down as well. Now it's so that when I'm sitting on the couch, the tweeter is you know, 10 inches lower than it would be. Because it doesn't matter. It doesn't care if it's upside down. The speaker doesn't care. It also helps these come out nice and straight instead of janking up. I don't understand why this isn't the normal way to have banana plugs go in. Yep. Somebody name these, please. I love them. I love them so. And when they are set up in their correct location, which I have marked on the floor with uh, electrical bundling tape. Mm -mm -mm. They miss the screen and they're equidistant apart in the room. Of course all these cords moved. I'll straighten that out. This whole thing's getting straightened out. I'm on my wire. That's why it's crooked. 
Thoughts? I want to build you a set. It'll cost you about $1,200 with shipping. 500 in parts, 400 in labor, shipping. That's probably a BS thing. I don't think I build these for you. They're too good a project for someone to do. Putting these together requires literally a drill and a screwdriver. These are a little harder. Those isolators require a drill press. My God. My God. This has been a dream of mine for a long time to build speaker stands with subs in them. I tell you right now, when I have both of these going, they're way more impressive than that. Well, not way more impressive, because I probably didn't build that. All right, I have nothing else to say about these. It's been like 15 minutes. 15 minutes of showing off my babies. My babies.